All right. I always get so excited when I see that little live red thing pop up, like we're, we're doing it. So hello and welcome. I'm Kelly Bonsell and I'm here with Uma Joy and we are here for our Monday creative musings. Um, just seeing what comes up and be in creative discussion and conversation and um so grateful that you are watching us either live or enjoying the recording later on. So thank you and welcome. And hello, Uma. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, um, life is good and um, opportunities are always showing up for rolling with, with things that are unexpected. So overall, I'm good. And it's good to be here with you, Kelly. Yes, yes, you too. So Uma and I have been, we have something in the works. We are planning um, something we offered last year and um, we're going to do it again, but with a, with more structure and more guidance. And that is a solstice self-discovery practice um, starting on December 1st and going for the 21 days ending on the winter solstice. And so as we have been talking about sort of the theme and the feeling and the energy of the, of this time um, we have sort of loosely created our theme around rebirth and reawakening and um, reclaiming and how we can use creativity in those ways. And as I was thinking about coming into a conversation with you tonight, you know, I feel like I really am like at that place where I am, you know, like percolating and I'm not quite sure what I'm brewing yet or what's going to grow or what's going to come out, you know, like I'm, it's like, I'm, I'm feeding this, this brew and I'm, but I'm, there's still things that are undiscovered. And so I'm looking forward to the conversation tonight, just kind of discussing that place and how that, being okay with that, you know, and, and the unknown and, um, how that's going to, um, you know, give me the, the fuel for the, for the rebirth and the reawakening and, and the reclaiming. Yeah. Which, which is great, Kelly. And, um, I, um, just for like one minute before we went live, um, I, caught Kelly up on a, a change in my life that happened today. And um, we had decided already about this rebirth, reawaken, reclaiming. And um, one of the things for Kelly and I, you know, we, we use our creativity to, to process everything. And that's what, if you've been with us before, that we've, we've talked to you about what we, you know, how, how we show up to life and um, that we use inquiry and intention as we paint, draw, doodle, any of it. And even if we're cooking in the kitchen or gardening, we use intention. And so we came up with the, the rebirth, reawaken, reclaiming. And some of you may know that I have been working on a studio, building a, a studio here on the land where my son and granddaughter and I live. And it's been running high, just running high. Everything has flowed. It's been so beautiful. And, you know, the support and the love and, and, and the help. And today kind of hit a, a, I could call it a little hiccup or I could say it smacked into the wall. Um, but we ran into a situation with permit, red tape, codes, et cetera. And um, so we have to kind of play that game. And it was really an unexpected timing and with someone here that's doing the construction. And so I looked at it and, you know, yeah, none of us were very happy about it. And Kelly, what I was telling you earlier is it also gave me the opportunity to say, well, we don't always have control about what shows up in our lives, but we have control or we have choice that 
how are we going to deal with it? And that's kind of where I am with it. And so then as getting close to tonight and our conversation here, it's like, okay, we've got our, our solstice practice coming up. And all right, rebirth. How do I want to, to explore this whole thing with the, with the studio? Rebirth. What can I reawaken in myself? What can I reclaim? And I'm, you know, I can put that into an excitement, say, all right, let's do the work. Let's walk the walk, talk the talk, and show up the way, the way that we do. Yeah. And anything that comes up is okay because whether, oh, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I'm not happy about it, but I'm flowing with it. And I might find I wake up in the morning and it's like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. And that emotion is okay too. You know, it's just emotions, but I can also take them to the canvas. And so I can use this opportunity. Yes, do what I need to do. And how can I stay in that center place of discovery and accepting the mystery and step by step? Yes. So that's kind of where I am with it all, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel for you because I've been so excited to see all the pictures. I mean, I saw a picture of you today on Facebook out there with the hose, like, you know, spraying down. And, you know, it's not, it's not a like Pollyanna, oh, everything happens for a reason. Everything's, you know, kind of attitude, but it is a, okay, like just trusting the process. And we've talked about that before too. And maybe there's a pause that is, I mean, I don't know. And I'm not saying that like you, you can't figure it out. Like, okay, well, here's the thing, but it's, um, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, like getting curious rather than getting, you know, frustrated by it. I had a moment. Um, so I did a workshop this weekend um, with Amber Quile Milani Bonici and the Women Unleashed um, group. And I was um, got to be an art doctor. And you know this, but for those of you, I'm telling you. And I made this painting that you see here. And I this was 10 hours out of this weekend that I got to be in creativity in the state of listening and trusting and practicing. And what I realized, the effects of that, like afterwards, is that I was, I like, and because I'm conditioned to like, when that's happening, my body, my heart, my mind, all, they know where to go. And so it's not as shocking to my system as it once was. Like before I'd be like, oh, I don't even know what to do with like, this was, but it was just like, okay. Like, it was like, I felt like I like knew myself, you know? And I had a moment, um, yesterday evening when we were before we were supposed to meet and I was running late and I had to go pick up my kids somewhere and we had to go get dinner and I'm got all this stuff in my car and I'm like I can get all this stuff out and I'm like carrying all this stuff in I'm already running late you know but I'm okay the kids are ah, you know and I'm holding multiple glasses and this glass just like drops and it shatters on my driveway and I was like like the way I felt was like okay okay and I just went in and I put my stuff down. I got my kids in and I like swept it with like such calmness. There was no like frustration about it. I was just like, okay. Like it was, it was like that sign of like, slow down, take a breath, you know? Yeah. And I mean that and trusting, you know, that like when we get those signs, sometimes they're really big, like what you're experiencing right now. And sometimes they're small, like a broken glass, but just, if you can reframe and we've taught, we, we did, we've done several practices on that reframing to, okay, what do I need to do here? What do I need to listen to? And I don't think I would have, I think I would have been like, Oh, you know, blah, 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 like on another day, but because I had had dropped into that space all weekend, I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. You know, like, just like the muse is still like working with me. Like the energies are still like speaking to me and, um, and I, and I get it, I hear it. And I just want to stay there, you know, and um, I'm looking forward to this, 
moving into this solstice practice as a way to have a consistent, which we do, but like with that intention for those three weeks of time. Yeah, yeah. me too. And the, the thing about, you know, you were in that 10 hours and so it was much easier. And what, you know, I know that I noticed for myself and we've talked about this is the more often that we do that, you know, whether it's for 15 minutes or five minutes or the 10 hours over two days, the more often we do that, the easier it is to remember that, that because we're continually practicing it. You know, when you were a baby and you were practicing walking, you did it over and over and over, and then you didn't have to think about it anymore. You got it, and that's a part of your life. And it's the same way, in my mind, with creativity. We practice it, we practice it, we practice it, and it is a part of our lives. And it doesn't say that everything is always smooth, but there is that that neuron or that neural track that knows that this is a perhaps a more effective way to respond or to to make sense of or to accept, to work through, to allow the energy to move through. Because again, it's not wrong to have these upsets when something happens. But how do we respond from there? How do we recover? Where do we go forward? How do we move it so it doesn't get stuck in the body? You know, and we're, we end up making choices or having reactions and event, um, you know, by choice, as opposed to that default setting that this happens and then that, you know, I have no control over my response. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about kind of setting intentions for, I mean, I guess like when I think about where we're moving in as far as like the solstice practice and we are, you know, we'll be approaching like the beginning of the new year on the, you know, the calendar that we use. And um, it's like, I feel, you know, like I was saying before that I'm kind of like, I'm sort of like figuring out like what's going to, what is going to rebirth? Like what will, and it's all like I need to know. And I don't need to like, maybe I need to name it. Maybe something will come so clear that it's like, this is the thing. Or maybe I'm just open to the possibility of what wants to come and, you know, forward. Um, but I know that I'm much more likely to have something that I can, can see, be curious about, um, start to, to, to like flesh out or, 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 make sense of if I have some kind of a practice. And so we, you know, talk about creativity here and our creative practice, but, um, you know, I've been thinking too about like other practices that involve the same cycle of connection that this creative process does for us. And, um, you know, I'm curious to explore multiple modalities, but like threading it through that, you know, same intention, if that makes sense. Can you flush that out a little bit more or with an example? Yeah. Well, hey, so I have been very curious about yoga lately. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've done yoga, like I've done yoga at the Y and at yoga, you know, and I mean, I've, I've had my own little practice, whatever, but I've never been very good at it. And I've definitely never been consistent. And I've had all kinds of reasons why I've wanted to bring it into my life, right? I want my body to be fitter. I want to have more peace of mind. Oh, people say that it's going to like give you these amazing results and all this stuff, right? And I've heard so many different connections about it. Um, and lately it's like, and I looked up the definition and now I, I can't even think of it, but it was about, and maybe you know, but this connection between like mind and spirit and body and the physicality, the movement that we associate here in like Western culture, especially is like one part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I'm really curious why that keeps ending up on my list, you know, and 
And it's like over and because there's a lot of things that have been on my list. Like I'm going to be a, I, all kinds of things, but this one consistently. And I'm, I, I am drawn to like finding more and more information. And I even did this like yoga, free yoga class at like five 30 in the morning, not this weekend, but last weekend, which was chanting. And it was Sadhana, I think is how you pronounce it. Sadhana. Yeah. And what will you say it again? Sadhana. Sadhana. Yes. And um, I had never done that before. And it was like scary and out of my comfort zone, which is what we've been working on. And I didn't know any of the chance and, you know, but I was there, I was so moved and I was so in touch with my body, just sitting in meditation and chanting and hearing my back hurts. I'm uncomfortable. Oh, that's okay. That's your body. Like, I mean, it was incredible. Like just this experience and the, the discomfort mixed with the like awe and anyway, so that's a thing that I'm really wanting to explore. And I can feel the same kind of process of like moving in and out from mind to body to visual to like the creative piece of it, like I do when I'm in a creative process, you know, like, and so I'm really curious how, I don't know, like. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Um. That's the whole thing. Can we bring this, the intention, the inquiry into every part of our life? And um, I love that you're in the inquiry of it. Um, I think you know that, you know, that's my background. Um, long ago, uh, my, my studies in India and co-owner of a yoga center and teaching for a number of years. And you know, I don't think I knew that. I don't think I knew that. that. Or maybe not to that level. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, many lives ago, but it was in, in this birth, yes. And um, so yeah, I um and then interestingly, when I chose to go to chiropractic college, instead of using what I knew from yoga. And continuing that practice for the value of it, I let a lot of it go on the back burner. It's like, well, I, I know all that and it's inside of me, but I didn't quote practice. And there's so many different forms that yoga takes um, that, you know, you find what feels right to you. And with my studying in India, there was a lot of traditional yoga that was in my the training that I was given. And, you know, I, I talk with this, talk about this with some people that, you know, are um, Indian and have a lot of ancestors in the yogic tradition. And, you know, there's, there's just so many forms. And for me, it's people are doing it, whatever it's taking and whatever form it's at least something. And I love that you're saying, well, what are all these different parts? because there are so many different parts and yes, yoga means union. And so it's bringing all of those parts together. And it's interesting that you say the singing the other day. Um, so that was actually one of my strongest parts of it was playing harmonium and leading the, the satsang or the sadhana, you know, and, and that was a part of what, what our group did. And um, whenever I go to a concert where you know, the chanting is going on. I mean, there's usually just tears because it opens my heart so much. And um, the singing is, is the what what is one of the strongest parts for me. <sighs> and however I can support you in, um, you in your inquiry and bringing that into our 21-day um, um, solstice practice. Uh, yeah, what is, you know, the... The rebirthing, the reawakening, the reclaiming. Yeah. Um, you know, and that can be a part of it for, for all of us. And, you know, maybe the, you know, with the studio, yes, it's still happening. And maybe there's a pause button that's been, that's been pushed to regroup, you know, to rebirth, you know, that inner part of me. Because definitely, as much as it's been fun, I've been like this. <laughs> trying to, you know, support the, um, you know, our friend and my son who are doing the main parts of the, the work in the, 
in the studio. And I go out and do a little bit when they, when they deem that I'm worthy enough to help a little bit. And I don't, I'm saying that totally with tongue in cheek because, you know, um, I am so grateful. And if I need to be doing, you know, having their, their food fixed and taking care of all of the other things so that they can focus, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm not complaining at all. Yeah. Um, but, um, and I lost my train of thought there, but anyway, so oh, but taking, taking that pause because I am doing all of these million different things. And then, well, if I'm not going to be construction right now, I can go work in the orchard and, you know, be doing the mulching and I can go do this. And, you know, it's like, I'm usually a, to bed at late at night. I'm exhausted by, you know, <laughs> seven and eight o'clock and ready to go to bed then, which is yeah. so unusual, but it's, you know, so maybe it's the pause button. Right. It's okay. It'll yeah. Happen. Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, what I'm thinking too is about the, the union, you know, and how I think like I tend to like, I'm like, this is my thing. This is what I'm focusing on. Like, and, and I've done this, like, okay, this is who I am when I'm at my job and this is who I am when I'm a mom. And, and it's not like that serious, you know, but like, kind of, you know, like, like you and I, we're doing creative musings, we're doing creative practice and it's on paper and this is what we do. And it's so much deeper than that. And there's, there is a lot of like harmony and, and all of that. But then it's got me thinking now, like, we also have so many other gifts that do show up in what we do. But like you were saying, you know, how you put the yoga on the backboard and you're like, it's in me, like it'll come up, but not doing the practice of it. I don't know. Like, I don't have a real clear like idea of what this looks like, but I'm just kind of excited for us to explore together for our solstice practice and see like what maybe there's something else that we weave into this, the, to what we're offering, you know, here and together. And I mean, and, and thinking about you in the orchard and like how that and that experience and bringing, you know, conversation about that. And we, and I mean, again, we do, and it's not like we don't have to try, we don't need to make like a, a sheet about, okay, let's now we're going to add these things in. I just think I want to be more conscious of that union and that it doesn't need to be a separate bullet on my to-do list. It can just be like, here's how I want to feel. And then all the different things that come in. Oh my gosh, I'm having, I'm gonna have to rewatch this conversation because I'm having like <laughs> this huge revelation of like, that's the to-do, right? It's how you want to feel, how you want to reawaken, what you want to reclaim. Yeah. And not the things I'm like, yeah. ugh. It's, it's totally, you know, yeah. how, how are we showing up in this world? Yeah. And it's really easy for me and for many of us to forget, to forget yeah. different things at different times. And it goes back to the more we practice, the more we remember more quickly. Yes. And we return to what I would term my true self, you know, I'm, you know, yes, it's all, it's all me and they're all facets of me, Yeah. but there's that part of me that, that I would, you know, my true self, which is love and light and able to handle or accept all of the different parts of me and allow that energy to move through rather than, oh my gosh, I'm not being perfect right now, you know, and I'm not shining my life and I'm not being fully in my loving state. And so I'm going to beat myself up. And it's like, I don't do that much anymore. Yeah. You know, um, it might flash through and that's okay. And I can accept that too. Wow. Geez. I'm perfectly imperfect. That's great. You know? Yeah. Um, and so it's just becoming more awake to who we are and how we show up to life. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna just acknowledge. So Kelly and, and I've been talking about, you know, this 21 day solstice practice and um, 
starting in the next couple of days, you'll see some videos come out and uh, whether it's on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and our personal sites and our joint sites, but talking more about this coming up and how you can join us. It's going to be free. Um, and we would love to have you join us and do it more formally because each day we're going to be sending out, you know, different thoughts and prompts and support and um, just how we can all come together and be in a great creative practice together. And there's no, oh my goodness, uh, create more work for you <laughs> or make you beat yourself up because you're already doing too much. It's just something that, you know, to, to be together and be yeah. in community as we, we explore these ideas. Yes. So and I'm we were talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just, and just putting intention, you know, if you already have a yoga practice or you already have, you know, a cup of tea every morning, that's part of your ritual, like just setting that intention with us, you know, and with the, this kind of reawakening and rebirthing and reclaiming, um, just, you know, yeah. doesn't have to be much, but I'm excited about it. And, um, I'm so grateful to be with you, Uma. I just yeah. like, you're a magical being every like when we have conversation it's like um, thank you and um you know don't put me on a pedestal honey you're just <laughs> you're right there with me and i love you and um you know both kelly and i are just so pleased to be able to share together yes. and to um connect with with each of you who we who we term as beloveds or our creative muses um yeah. you know those that are musing with us yes so. and we we've had someone on with us and i'm sorry that i didn't acknowledge you but there's someone live watching and thank you so much and if you want to put any thoughts in the comments we're gonna in soon but um thanks for being with us and those of you that watch later thank you for being with us um and i i see you as the magical being with like your bare feet and the earth like not on the pedestal but like in it. Yes. <laughs> I think that was a trigger for an old thing. It's like, I don't want to be on a pedestal. I want yeah. my feet on the ground and yeah. just, you know, hug, hug us all <laughs> together. And um, yeah. And yes. it's, it's so, it is so magical to be together because we learn and we share with each other. And, you know, my, my favorite analogy that, um, Many of you, um, if you've been around me before, you know the, the pebble in the pond and the drop and it goes out and it goes out and it goes out and somebody else's pebble drops and it goes out and they intersperse, you know, they interrelate. And um, to me, that's what it is. I want to be the pe pebble in the pond and interact with your, your rings too. Yes, that's beautiful. Awesome. All right. Hi. So we have no creative musing this Thursday night. Um, a day of gratitude. And uh, for those of you that share it in whatever way you do, um, I'm using that terminology more than the terminology that I've been raised with. Um, no right or wrong there, but just a different awareness of what this day means. Yeah. And um, I also just very briefly want to acknowledge that even though this is a solstice practice, that we're talking about the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, there's so much of it that will relate to the Southern Hemisphere for your summer solstice. And you can still join us and go through these same things with the rebirthing, the reawakening and reclaiming, because it's something that we can do at any time. Yes. So I do want you to know if you're tuning in from the Southern Hemisphere, that we would love to have you join us as well. And um, it's for all of us. Thank We're you. all in this together. We're bringing that in. All right. Bye. We'll have a wonderful evening and wonderful day, evening to you all watching. Thank you so much. We'll see you yeah. soon. Okay. Peace and blessings. Bye.